we have seen the physical properties of water now let's look at some of the chemical properties of water water is quite a stable compound it does not decompose into its constituents easily only at very high temperatures that is temperatures greater than 2000 degree celsius water decomposes to form hydrogen and oxygen now let's look at the action of water on some metals let's start with potassium observe what happens when we drop this potassium piece in water so you see it reacts vigorously with water it instantly catches fire and burns with a lilac flame so the reaction of potassium with water is explosive in nature and is very vigorous so how it reacts this is the reaction of potassium with water potassium mainly lies to be in the metallic form that it is stable as k plus so hydro uh, water we know exists as h plus oh minus in physics you study that unlike charges attract so when we have k plus it likes to be with oh minus and hence it forms koh and hydrogen gas is released so this is how the reaction of potassium takes place with water to form potassium hydroxide and hydrogen gas is released now let's look at the action of water on sodium this reaction is less vigorous than potassium it burns with a golden yellow flame even sodium catches fire it burns with a golden yellow flame but the reaction of sodium with water is less vigorous as compared to the reaction of potassium with water so let's look at the reaction taking place so in this case we have sodium reacting with water so sodium likes to be in this form this is the stable form of sodium and water is h plus oh minus so na plus reacts with oh minus so we get naoh and hydrogen gas is released so this is how sodium reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen is released the gas evolved when water reacts with sodium is so when a metal sodium reacts with water we know the reaction is explosive na reacts with oh to form sodium hydroxide naoh and it forms hydrogen so the gas released when water reacts with sodium is hydrogen let's look at the reaction of calcium with water you see bubbles of a gas forming the gas can be collected in that test tube the reaction was not at all vigorous like in case of sodium and potassium so when calcium reacts with water it releases a gas which is as was released in sodium and potassium the gas released is hydrogen it also forms the corresponding hydroxide which is cal calcium hydroxide but in case of calcium the reaction is not vigorous in the first two cases that is sodium reacts vigorously potassium reacts very vigorously with water but in case of calcium the reaction is not vigorous so these are the three things that we had seen potassium reacts with water very vigorously and it burns with a lilac flame sodium reacts with water in a less vigorous manner it reacts and burns with a golden yellow flame and the reaction of calcium with water is not vigorous so the metals when they react with water they form the corresponding hydroxide and they release hydrogen gas now let's look at the action of steam with some metals there are some metals with which cannot react with cold water for the action of water on these metals water has to be in the gaseous form that is we need intense conditions these metals cannot react with cold water so we need steam for such metals so one of these metals is magnesium magnesium reacts only with steam and not with cold water so we take magnesium ribbon we have water which will be heated to form steam 
let's look at the action of steam on magnesium ribbon. So magnesium reacts with steam and it forms a dazzling white flame. When metals react with steam, they form the corresponding oxide and they still release hydrogen gas. So in this case, we have magnesium. It does not react with cold water. It reacts with steam and it forms the corresponding oxide that is MgO, magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas is released. Similarly, some other metals like aluminium, zinc and iron, they cannot react with cold water. They react only with steam to form the corresponding oxides. So aluminium forms aluminium oxide and hydrogen. Zinc forms zinc oxide and hydrogen. In case of iron, the reaction is reversible. So iron reacts with steam to form iron oxide plus hydrogen. This reaction is reversible. If we take these as the reactants, we'll get the products. So in the third case, when iron reacts with steam, this is a reversible reaction. So when metals react with steam, some metals, they cannot react with water. They react with steam to form the corresponding oxides and hydrogen gas is released. Based on the reactivity of the metals with water, a series is prepared which is known as activity series. Now let's look at this activity series. This is the metal activity series. It shows the decreasing reactivity of the metals with water. We had seen that potassium reacts vigorously with water. Sodium reacts less vigorously as compared to potassium. And these metals, they do not react with cold water. They react only with steam. The metals below lead in the activity series, they do not react with water or they react in very trace amounts. So based on the reactivity of the metals with water, this series known as the activity series of metals is prepared. So it shows that potassium reacts very vigorously with water and the rate of reaction decreases as we go down the series. What do you think is water gas? Well, if you think that water in the gaseous form is water gas, then you are wrong. Water in the gaseous state is steam. When we talk of water gas, it is a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. When carbon reacts with water, it forms a mixture of two gases, that is carbon monoxide and hydrogen. This mixture of two gases is known as water gas. So water gas is carbon monoxide plus hydrogen. Do not confuse water gas with water in the gaseous state. When we talk of water gas, we mean a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Action of water on the metallic oxides. When the metallic oxides, they react with water, they always form the corresponding hydroxides. So all the metallic oxides, potassium oxide plus water, it forms potassium hydroxide. Sodium oxide plus water forms sodium hydroxide. Similarly, calcium oxide forms calcium hydroxide. So all the metallic oxides, they react with water to form the corresponding metal hydroxides. And when we talk of non-metallic oxides, all the non-metallic oxides react with water to form the corresponding acids. So if we take carbon dioxide, it reacts with water to form carbonic acid, that is H2CO3. Sulfur dioxide forms sulfurous acid and sulfur trioxide forms sulfuric acid. All the non-metallic oxides they react with water to form the corresponding acids. The metallic oxides react with water to form the corresponding hydroxides. The non-metallic oxides react with water to form the corresponding acids. Now let's look at the action of water on calcium carbide. So you see that it forms a milky white solution. A gas is released which catches fire. 
So in this, the reaction taking place is calcium carbide, which is CaC2. It reacts with water. Now CaC2, this is in the form Ca2 plus C4 minus. When this reacts with H plus OH minus, calcium goes with hydroxide to form calcium hydroxide. This is the milky white solution that we had seen of calcium hydroxide and the reaction of C with H gives a gas which is acetylene gas. This is explosive gas and it easily catches fire. So when calcium carbide reacts with water, it forms a milky white solution of calcium hydroxide and a gas is released that is C2H2. Now, if we have a colorless, odorless white, uh, white liquid, how do we know that it is water? Well, there are certain tests for water. We know the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So we check the boiling point of that colorless and odorless liquid. If it comes out to be 100 degrees Celsius, it is water. All liquids have a definite boiling point. If there is an increase or decrease in the boiling point, this means there is an impurity added to the liquid. We know the boiling point of pure water is 100 degrees Celsius. So if that colorless and odorless liquid, it has a boiling point of 100 degrees, that means it is water. Another chemical test to check whether that colorless and odorless liquid is water. We take anhydrous copper sulfate, which is white in color. We add water to it. So when we have... When we have anhydrous copper sulfate and we add water to it, the anhydrous copper sulfate is white in color. This reacts with water to form hydrated copper sulfate. And this is blue in color. So a chemical test for water is we make water react with copper anhydrous copper sulfate. When anhydrous white copper sulfate reacts with water, it forms hydrated copper sulfate, which is blue in color. So if we have a colorless and odorless solution and we have to check whether it is water or not, we can use either of the two tests.